Hi, my name is Chris. This is Coco. Uh, we're going to answer a question that was a uh, comment response to the video about uh, feathers. You asked, uh, how do I keep my macaws as quiet as yours? What do you do to keep them quiet? Um, first, let me, uh, i, I got to ask you to kind of re rethink your, your method. Uh, in, instead of determining a way to keep them quiet, evaluate the situation that might be causing them to make noise. And instead of making efforts to keep them quiet, there are <laughs> there are ways of uh, planning and assessing your day and building a regiment around uh, or building a, a schedule for them that can better equip them with a process to, uh, of planning out their day to where they have a regular regimented schedule of knowing what to expect throughout the day, uh, when is a good time to sleep, eat, veg, chill, fly. Um, Basically, is is um, the reason why you think mine are so quiet is um, most of the times when I'm making these videos is around the time that I've just finished an exercise with them, just taking them somewhere. Um, they've either just finished eating and are ready for a nap, or um, there, there's usually a reason. So, typically, my macaws still make noise and they can be loud at times. Um, it's usually when I have the vacuum cleaner going or am just arriving, they, they kind of freak to kind of welcome me back. And then when I'm leaving, they all say bye-bye and holler and, and whatnot. But um, uh, in your efforts to try to keep them quiet, um, think more about what you can do to give them some structure. Um, your training processes that may involve finding a, a good training treat, something that they respond to. Uh, giving them, like I said in the other videos, plenty of mental stimulation, um, mental exercises. Uh, there's a few videos on my channel about uh, some basic tricks you can you can teach them after you've gotten past the you know step up and uh, hello and goodbye and things like that. Um, also taking them places, allowing them to go with you and see where you're going, what you're doing when you're gone. It gives them a mental picture of what's going on throughout your day when they're missing you. Uh, Macaws typically bond extremely well with whoever's taking care of them. They, they remember and recognize who's feeding and watering them. So they're, they're, quite quite, they're going to be quite interested in what goes on throughout your day, in addition to uh, requiring the structure necessary to better equip them with some stability uh, throughout the day. Uh, give you an idea of what I do with mine in the mornings. Go on. All right. In the mornings, I usually wake up and I, I feed them first thing. Uh, if I have to go somewhere, I'll, I'll pick one or the other or, or two. I usually can't take all three at one time because it, it can just kind of get a little hectic. Um, I kind of rotate their schedules throughout the week. Um, feeding and watering, you know, good three, four times a day, depending on how much exercise they've done. I go through about two training processes a day with all three birds. Um, now I'm down to three, but um, I adopted one out the other week, so... Um, as far as the training processes, you know, I, I reward with treats. Um, I give them plenty of flight time. They, this, uh, the Scarlet, she fly or he flies around probably a good 12, 15 times a day. It's just usually at his leisure. The other ones we're still working on. This one was caged, uh, caged for a long time, and the other one was a breeder for a number of years. So I'm kind of reintroducing them to uh, their comfort zone with what they should already have with flying. Uh, flight time is definitely a wonderful thing. It can give them a chance to exert their energy and. Uh, then not as much will come out in boredom as a result of um, not having that exercise. You're going to have plenty of energy to go vocal. Now, this vo the fact that they are making noise and being vocal is a good thing because um, one thing that tells you is that they're, they're obviously going to respond with communication if you have the proper training treat and the proper training process to um, get them talking more and saying words, sentences, and phrases. They're very keen and intelligent to associating words and phrases with activities. So if you're going out the door and you can say uh, like bye-bye or goodbye, you make sure you say it just one time so you don't devalue the word. Eventually they're going to make that mental association with the activity and the word or phrase. Uh, the more frequently and often that you can do that, the better. Most people, I, um, I, I strongly recommend against this, they'll turn on a TV or a radio and um, turn it to a, a reasonable volume and that will distract them. What that does is kind of creates a confusion level. They're not hearing anything uh, repetitive or anything that could uh, they could associate uh, those words with. So basically you're just teaching them a bunch of words that mean nothing to them. These sounds have no representation or uh, association that they can make 
or correlation between any activities done throughout the day, which isn't really that mentally stimulating or mentally healthy because, you know, after so much time of doing that, they're going to be used to that process and just the whole association thing is going to go out the window. Um, anyway, I hope that answers your question. Um, anyway, if they, if, they're, if they do continue to be loud after attempting to uh, add more structure or give them plenty of things to, uh, to occupy their time with, you can go to distraction techniques, and those distraction techniques would be if they're on you or off you, you give them plenty of toys, um, plenty of things to keep their interest motivated. And those are basically, those are basics on, on distraction to keep them from making those noises, which would be like giving them pieces of blank paper to tear, uh, chunks of wood that they can chew, nothing that's got any paint or chemicals, plastics, uh, no treated wood or anything like that. With my guys, I take a bunch of scrap wood, drill holes through them, run a coat hanger through it, tie it over their, their uh, uh, perches or jungle gems, and they chew it to pieces, which is a good thing for them. It gives them a chance to exercise their beak. You'll see that you'll t be taking them to have their beak dremeled a lot less if, if you're having to do that as, as a result of an overbite or an underbite. Um, other than that, just uh, anything you can do to add an additional play area for them, um, that's going to give them plenty of other space to claim as their own. Then you're going to notice other reactions and actions that you can use as catalysts in training techniques. Uh, again, good luck, and I hope I've answered your question. Uh, take care of your birds.